This is a video on the construction of the major scale. This is one of the more important initial items to be handled in understanding the language of music because the major scale is the mother of all of our music. From her we get the key circle actually. From her we get the um, all these other scales, the minor scales. From her we get the intervals, the, the chords, everything. And you will see that as these videos progress from one to another. So the first thing is that, and by the way, this video will have a companion video, which is uh, a video with the keyboard. And that will show the actual notes on the piano, on the, on the keyboard, and how the major scale is correct, is uh, constructed. The writing of the major scale, I think, is just as important as the playing of it because it's, it's part of your education in regards to the uh, language of music. Uh, the same thing with the spoken language. The writing of letters in foreign languages, which in many cases are different than the writing, or shall we say the alphabet, in the English language. So, writing is very important in mean, both music and the spoken language. So, let's get to work here. Okay, first of all, with a ruler and pen, pencil, we do the uh, bar line. Okay, I was concerned whether the pencil shows up enough rather than ink, but I think the pencil sound shows, shows very well. If I do it in ink, <laughs> I have no way of correcting anything. And sometimes, yes, I do make mistakes. Okay, the brace. Which makes it sort of pretty, I don't know. It's not that important, but it's it's nice. Okay, and then the treble clef. And then the bass clef. Now the treble clef, as you see, as you see starts with a little, little dot here goes a little bit to the slanting to the left and up to, oh, about the next line, if you can imagine it. I went a little bit better than that, but that's okay. Down the bottom line, up to the third line, and around that G line here, because it's called the G clef. Plus the fact it uh, sort of looks like a very fancy G. The bass clef also starts with a little dot, and whether you put the dot in or not is really not important, but I think it's sort of nice. But that's up to you. I don't really care. But the main thing is start on the F line here, and then down to the middle line, up to the top line, and ending in the space. Okay? So that may have to be practiced a wee bit. Now, the scale of C major will have no sharps or flats, accidentals, as we call them. But all the other scales will have either sharps or flats. You don't mix the sharps and flats in a major scale. All your accidentals, in other words, your sharps and flats, will be either sharps or flats. You don't mix them. Now, in some of the other videos, I did show how to write the sharps and the flats. And I think I'll do again here. We'll turn this over. And I'll enlarge this, of course, so we can see exactly how it's done. Now, the uh, sharp. 
rather long two lines fairly long fairly close together and then two very stubby lines further apart so it makes a very attractive sharp now if you have a let's say that you have two lines in your music and you have a space note then the sharp will be two very light lines very close together then the stubby lines on the two lines outlining the space if the note is on a line note and I'll just draw one of them because that's all we need then the two very light lines then the stubby lines in the space outlining outlining the the line that makes a very pretty a sharp sign for your manuscript very neat very nice and it's so much better than you know something like a tic-tac-toe sign Ugh. not good the flat sign okay if you would draw the uh, uh, two lines here the flat sign also starts with a very light rather long sufficiently long line and ending on the line here and then starting in the middle here going up making it like a half of a heart sign and heavier your light line up and down to here and then this heavier line and, and that makes again a very attractive flat sign if you only have one uh, I'm put one line here because that's all we need again. By the way, your notes are that egg-shaped at a 45 degree angle. Then your flat will be a very light line. Then the heavier line in within the starting and ending in the spaces on either side of the line, outlining the line, so that if you have several notes, for example. Oh, let's see, something maybe like this. You've got this. And, ah, that's not good. Ah, let's do it this way. And let's say you want the upper note sharped. Well, you put it over here. That's not a problem. It doesn't have to be close to it like these because you've got a, another note here so draw your light lines now you want to outline this particular note because that's where the sharp goes then you put your stubby lines over here on the two lines outlining that note now then that's obviously a space sharp for the space note if you need a sharp sharp for that note, sure, you can put that in. And let's say you want a sharp note for that one. Let's let's put this one over here. Now you see I've put the stubby lines in the space outlining the line. And then let's put this right here. The stubby lines on the two lines if you had such a line here outlining that so you can see that this is a sharp for that note that is a sharp for this line note and that's a sharp for the space note and the same thing with your flats okay i hope that helps okay getting on into drawing the um the major scales and your job is to draw all of the major scales uh, from all keys on the piano so from C for example okay now you can do it in the treble or the bass clef or both if you want to you know have some good practice in drawing your scales and your sharps and your flats let's put this in the bass clef starting with C. 
Now, we're not worried about rhythm at all, so you don't need to draw any bar lines. Just the notes, and maybe about an inch apart. And yeah, maybe a little, little finger apart. So the next one would go in this space here. See if you can get some consistency with what you're doing here. So things look, the spacing looks normal. So the space here. And you can judge it after a while. B and then C. Okay. Now actually the bottom note of this, at the bottom part of this scene should touch the line. Let's erase this. And draw. Now it this does touch the bottom line, so actually maybe a little bit a little bit higher. There we go. Okay. Then number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight is the same as one, just an octave higher. OCT means eight. Octave. Okay. Now you're going to have, the, the scale is built with whole steps and half steps. So one to two is a whole step, two to three is a whole step, three to four is a half step. Four to five is a whole step, five to six is a whole step, six to seven is a whole step, and seven to eight is a half step. Okay, that's fine. So we can see that most your steps are going to be whole steps. Then you have two half steps one between three and four, the other between seven and eight degrees of the scale. Now, we can divide that into what we'll call tetrachords. Tetra, four. So one, two, three, four is one tetrachord. And that is made up of a whole, two whole steps and a half step. Now, to get to the fifth note of a scale, you've got to have a whole step. But then the second tetrachord will be, again, four, four, four degrees of the scale. So there's a one to two, two to three, three to four, except we call it five to six, six to seven, seven to eight. But if you'll notice that whole step, whole step, half step is the same thing as the whole step, whole step, half step here. So. This is very important because when we get to playing them on the piano, this is going to be very, very helpful in everything we do at the keyboard. So this is your lower tetrachord, this is your upper tetrachord. There you have it and the upper tetrachord. Just remember that you've got the whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step. And the two tetrachords are joined by a whole step here. So one, two, three, four with a half step here. Then go up a whole step, starting your second tetrachord or your upper tetrachord, whole step, whole step, half step. Okay. Now, if you want to draw your treble clef major scale, please do so. It's good practice. Remember, practice isn't just at the piano, but practice is anything. Practice talking, practice writing, practice playing the piano, practice singing. Anything that you do is practice. Okay like a doctor's practice. That's what he does. All right, a bay, a brace here. See if we can join those a little bit, that's good. And then shovel, now if we want to start with the dot, and I will, and then up to just above the treble, up the top line there, and then down to the second line, down the bottom, whoops. down to the bottom line. 
up to the third line and around that G line for the G cliff. That's not as pretty as that one, I don't think, but it's it's good enough. Then you dot down the middle line, up to the top line, and down the bottom space, and these two dots outlining the F line. So this is sort of like an F. So instead of two lines, you have two dots, making that the F cliff, and then circling around the G line here for the G cliff. So the G cliff, or the F cliff, or the treble cliff, and the bass cliff. Okay, let's do this in the um, treble clef here. I'm going to give you a couple of line, couple of uh, scales on treble, couple on the bass clef. Then I'll want you to do the rest of it because I don't want to make this video too terribly long. Let's try a scale on E flat. Now, flat sign, light line, then a dark in the space and ending down the space here, outlining the, the line note. Now, one thing about playing and, and drawing your lines, it must be in alphabetical order. In other words, A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. You can't go from E to E, um, to E sharp or something like that, whatever. You, you must have always the next alphabetical name for all of your scales. You cannot repeat any alphabetical name. It must be the next alphabet letter. Okay, now about a, uh, an inch apart. And so E, let's forget about the flat for a moment. Let's work with the alphabet. E, F. G, A, B, C, D, and we come to E again. And we will flat it because we're going to be making an E flat major scale. Okay, let's number it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and let's also indicate the uh, whole steps and half steps. Whole steps one to two, whole step two to three, exactly the same thing as up here. Then three to four, just like here, that would be the half step. This matter of this arrangement of whole steps and half steps is what creates a major scale. It sounds like a major scale. It's unmistakable as a major scale when it fits this particular pattern. Then four to five will always be the whole step. And then five to six is a whole step because this is the second tetrachord. So whole step, then a whole step, then a half step. Then we can mark one, two, three, four as the first whole step. And then going up a whole step to five, and that would be the upper tetrachord. Okay, now that's not an E-flat major scale yet. You've got to go through and work it out. E-flat to F is a whole step. E to E, E-flat to E, to E, E natural to F would be a whole step. Oh, that's okay then. F to G. Well, F to G, like here, is a whole step. So that's good. G to A is a whole step. But we don't want a whole step here. We want a half step. So we will have to include a flat there. I hope you get this pattern or this method of making or constructing a major scale. It's by steps, whole steps and half steps. Whole step, whole step, half step is the pattern for a tetrachord. Okay, good. Then from this tetrachord to the next tetrachord will be a whole step. Is it? Well, A flat 
to A as a half step, and A to uh, to B is another half step. That makes three half steps. Woo, it's too much. So now if we lower this with another flat, see how the line goes through that flat just like it does on the flat. Now, A flat to A is a half step, and, and A flat to B flat is, a, is another, uh, no, wait. A flat to A is a half step, and A to B flat is another half step. So two halves makes that whole step. So that's okay, we needed that flat. Okay, B flat to B natural is a half step, B natural to C is another half step, that makes a whole step. There's always got to be a one key on the piano, and we'll show that when uh, when we get to the piano. But anyway, visualizing it, you can see this. Then that's another whole step, and that is D to E flat is a half step. So your E flat major scale will then have a B flat, it will have an E flat, and it will have an A flat. Okay, so there you have it. Let's do a sharp scale. And again, if you want to do the uh, E-flat major scale down here, that's good. Or if you want to do another, let's say a sharp scale down here. Well, let's do that then. How about B? B major scale. That's got to look like a B. That didn't. That looks like a B. Okay. Remember that we must have an alphabet. So B, C, D, E, and so on. So B and then about an inch apart. B, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Okay. Now, yes, these got spread out a little bit more than these did. But that's okay, so long as it's legible, so that you can see it. Okay, and then number them is your next job. Now, if you've never done this before, actually, this should be quite fascinating for you. Because it shows you how to construct a major scale. If you know what a major scale is, you practice major scales, you're already a pianist, let's say that you've taken lessons for five, ten years or something like that, but never have done any writing, this should also be fascinating as to how to work things out on paper, on music manuscript paper. Okay, B to C is a half step. You want a whole step. So let, let's put in, instead of going individually like that, let's put in the whole step, and then one, two to three is a whole step. So that you just do this as, it's all exactly the same thing. One to two is a whole step. Two to three is a whole step. Three to four is a half step, and so on. So three to four would be your half step. Then four to five, that's the whole step, connecting the two tetrachords. Whole step. Whole, now, there's your first whole step of the of this upper tetrachord. There's your second whole step. And then finally, there's your half step at the very end. So 7 to 8 is a half step. 3 to 4 is a half step. 3 to 4, 7 to 8, 3 to 4, and 7 to 8. All the same thing. Okay, now let's go and we will add our sharps or flats here. We start with a flat so we know that everything is going to be flats. You do not mix flats and sharps within a scale. They're either all flats or they're going to be all sharps. So going from B to C is only a half step. You'll have to increase that by another half step by putting a sharp in here in. And there is your C sharp. Remember those two lines can be really close together. C sharp to D Again, is a half step. So we need to increase that again. 
Then you see the two stubby lines are in the space outlining the line. Here the stubby lines were on the lines outlining the space. D sharp to E is a half step. Fine, don't need to do a thing there. E to F is a half step. You have to visualize that or you'll have to be at the piano uh, to see it if you can't visualize it. But E to F is a half step. There we have to need to increase that by another half step. You see all sharps because we need to increase the distance. Okay, and, e, and D sharp to E will be a half step. So we need to increase that by a half step. And E sharp <laughs> to F is a is this is is the same thing. So now something's wrong here, isn't it? Let's check this once more. No, I think that's fine. Something does not look right here. B to C sharp to D sharp E F sharp G sharp. A sharp, okay, that's a half step. Oh, G sharp to A is a half step, yeah, okay. I'm visualizing something different here. All right, so increase that by a half step. And now we have G sharp to A sharp, so whole text, that's two black keys with a white key in between. Then A sharp to B is your half step. So there's your B major scale. Now, with this, demonstration here I would like you to go ahead and you'll have to have several pieces of paper because I want you to do the in, in from all keys on the piano choose any key G flat uh, D flat a a sharp oh, oh my word is there such a thing as an A sharp major scale you might find you you can do it but you're going to have to have double sharps somewhere along the way too so, when you run into trouble like that, forget it. Realize that that's not a valid uh, major scale, A sharp major, even though it's possible. Okay, draw them out. And if you like to, put that on your printer, scan it, and email it to me. And my email is R-A-L-P-H dot. H E D G E S at Gmail dot com. Okay, you might put that in in your uh, computer so that you have that and write it to me, and I'll take a look at it. And if you have any questions or comments or or you need some help, uh, let me know. Okay, so carry on. Talk to you later.